Yo, what is good, YouTube? Welcome back to another JC2K video. In today's video, we're building the best team possible in NBA 2K24, my team, right now. This is the squad that I would run if I could using every single card in my team right now that we do know of that is available. Before we hop into the video, if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Help me push towards the 15,000 subscriber mark on the channel. I upload every single day, and I would really appreciate it if y'all do subscribe. Without further ado, let's hop right into it. So, starting at the starting point guard position, I think it's... It is a pretty easy choice. Shea Gildress Alexander does get the nod as the best point guard card in the game right now, as I think many of y'all know. It's really nice that the ultimate rewards are actually both in this lineup, and I still both think are incredible cards, especially when you badge them out, because one of the most valuable things about these cards is the fact that they can get every single badge added on. So for SGA, you can add Limitless Range, Anchor, Clamps, and then two other badges of your choice, whether you want more defense like Challenger or Interceptor, or more offense like Blinders or Agent 3. There's a lot of versatility that you can have with this SGA card but he's got 86 speed 86 excel 83 shot three he's a capable slasher pretty good defender stats are solid put a shoe on him to boost those up even more he's 6 6 he's got a great release MJ dribble style which is a top five dribble style in the game pro leaner is a good one as well and overall he's just an incredible all-around card SGA easy choice for the starting point guard pretty easy choice for the starting two guard too Paul George I think definitely is holding it down as the best two guard in my team right now and he's on almost every squad you'll play online for a good reason reason because 245,000 MT is a good chunk of MT but for a guy like Paul George especially since you don't have to lock him in if you don't want to that type of value is really really nice because you can sell him back later and right now he's the best shooting guard in the game super duper versatile incredibly well-rounded card can kind of do everything on the court at a high level uh very good speed he's a very good shot creator as well even it's probably the worst aspect of his game is his shot creation and even there he's still very good he's got an elite release he's a top tier slasher and he's a great defensive card um and then badge wise I mean or animation like i said his release has been much improved this year's behind the back is pro which is probably the best moving behind the back in the game right now so that's a w as well in the full court and i think he's just an absolutely elite card continues to play at a very or continues to be my favorite shooting guard in the game for sure and honestly it might take a kobe and even then i'm not entirely sure even a kobe would pass up this paul george but uh it might be a while before we see a new shooting guard better than paul george uh, watch me say this and then we get leaks and it's like a diamond T Mac is coming or something. But regardless, right now at least, PG's best shooting guard in the game. Small forward. I'm including him again despite the fact that nobody really has him because he is the best small forward that is technically available in the game. I know you can't get this card until next Wednesday unless you pull him. I won't have him until next Wednesday in all likelihood because I don't open packs. But, and I don't think anybody else really, really will either because I recommend number one, y'all don't really open packs. And number two, the odds on pulling were so low. Anyway, but six, nine, seven foot wingspan, hot spots from everywhere, eight hoffs. You got uh, bulldozer, posterizer, blow by dimer. I think this is touch passer he also has chasing artist clamps interceptor and then he's got a couple others he's got like two step uh spin cycle maybe and a couple of, like he's got a couple of the extra badges as well that don't show up on 2k db because they still haven't figured out how to transition the next gen badges into this somehow i don't really know but whatever the case may be uh defensive i mean that all the way around stat wise he's the best card in the game uh, i think he's the best card in the game period because his release is really good this year his movement is really good he is just the best card in the game and that's without even any sort of badge upgrades you badge him out he's really not missing very many key badges period but add on the ones he might be missing rise up blinders claymore uh slippery off ball brick wall things of that nature and then soup up everything that's on bronze silver maybe even some golds to hoff and you're gonna have a small forward centerpiece type card for your team that can play it for months i have a high I, I honestly expect that you, that lebron will be on my team for a significant chunk of time after i add him same thing with this man Giannis antetokounmpo obviously has himself a very long-term spot on the squad as well seven foot with a seven foot four wingspan Giannis with 93 speed 93 excel i understand he's not an elite level shooter but he is capable enough with a 67 three the ability to get a shoe that boosts that up more of course uh and then obviously to get any sort of shooting badge you want added on him as well if you'd like to do so there are i mean Giannis is a capable enough shooter obviously i understand he's not the best shooter in the world but he is certainly a good enough one to get the job done uh, defensively he's obviously maybe the best card in the game half of anchor post lockdown every single badge in the game defensively is on the card at least at some tier and he's just incredibly complete incredibly good amazing slasher incredibly glitchy player build he's just legitimately one of the best cards in the game uh no doubt about it release 
isn't amazing, but it's okay. It's good enough to where I can like, I can justify um, shooting open with him for sure. I feel confident shooting the ball with Giannis, which is very important and uh, definitely something that I would say is true. So I think he's a great card. I think he's super duper complete and uh, I think he's the best defensive card in the game probably as well. I put him at the four because I put Chad at the five. I put Chad at the five more because he's taller than Giannis. I actually have Giannis guard the five most of the time defensively, especially if I go up against a Shaq, a Wilt, somebody like that uh, in a truly inside center, even an Embiid. I will have Giannis guard those guys because Chet's biggest flaw is his lack of strength. But everything else about him, especially when Giannis is guarding the main pick and roll big, uh, allows him to roam defensively. And he's a super versatile card. He can shoot the ball at a very high level. He's got good speed. He's 7-1. So 77 speed is certainly no slouch whatsoever. Um... I just think he's a really, really good card all the way around. I like his release a lot. He dunks the ball pretty well. He's a super versatile card. I just think Chet, despite the low strength, which is annoying and it definitely is a significant flaw, it's not a significant enough flaw for me to really say that he's not worth um, using, if, especially if you locked in Giannis. Like, he makes pretty much everybody's team, I think. I, he should. I think he's the best starting option next to Giannis in the game right now because Giannis can guard pick and roll at such a high level. And I like Chet's ability to stretch the floor, defend, versatile floater off. Off the ball can play can put the ball on the floor a little bit has good speed all that type of stuff there's a lot of good that chet home can provide on the court if you can find a way to hide that strength and that's what you where Giannis comes in so you could switch this if you wanted it really doesn't matter too much but next we have um the backup point guard position which i think is going to be lonzo there's a part of me that wants to put john wall here i kind of think john wall is the more fun option at point guard but lonzo is probably the more complete option he's a really good defender the size is super useful on this card he dunks the ball well he's a good shooter good speed and the size like i said is super duper important that's one of the biggest things that's such a big deal about this card is the size that is so useful and he's just such a complete option uh, at the point guard position because his release is super nice this year his movement isn't incredible but it's solid enough for sure that it gets the job done um it's just a really really good card that does he does a lot of things really really well uh and i like his release he's not an incredible shot creator but he is a pretty good playmaker does at least have silver speed booster as well which is nice a lot of guards just don't have speed booster for whatever reason and i honestly don't totally understand that but uh lonzo does which is obviously a w and i think um I think he's a great card. I really like him. I think he's super versatile point guard. I think he's an awesome option. The reason I pick Lonzo over John Wall is because B-Roy, maybe not quite as strong defensively as a two. It's nice to have a defensive PG. Not that B-Roy is a bad defender as well at all, especially if you do upgrade his defensive badges, which yes, he needs a good chunk of badges. But if you were to upgrade them on him, he will be just fine. Uh, 88 speed and excel, 86 shot three, 90 driving dunk. Decent defender. Uh, like I said, better with shoe and badges. Overall, just badge upgrades in general will help this card out shooting and playmaking wise as well his release is elite though he's already an incredible card as a base card he's an incredible slasher moves pretty well he's still in my opinion the second best shooting guard in the game and i think he's an absolutely awesome card especially like i said when he's badged out at the backup three i go andre kirilenko i think ak is just that man defensively i think he's arguably the best perimeter lock in the game it's basically him lebron and probably Giannis if you were to play Giannis as your lock uh but an 82 shot three 87 interior 93 perimeter 93 lateral 91 block playmaking is very very capable on him as well which is nice but mainly he's just an incredible defender he's super versatile can guard pretty much one through five at a very high level especially with how dead mashing kind of is this year i mean if ak gets a wallop animation he's going to get a stop on even the biggest bigs in the game right now he is an amazing defensive card and gets the job done offensively and that's really all he needs to do he's not the most athletic i kind of like him at the three more than the four as well because i want my fours to be able to dunk the ball off the slip i don't really run pick and roll with ak much so i like him at the three i honestly like kd at the four better as well because kd isn't quite as the lead of a defender doesn't have to be a lock at the four still obviously a very good defender especially when he's badged up and uh, he's an incredible pick and pop shooter with obviously some of the best shooting badges in the entire game athletically the speed at power forward can be a big mismatch against slower fours and then defensively like i said he's not bad as a base card but definitely can be significantly improved with badge upgrades as well as adding a couple badges like anchor glove maybe brick wall or rebound chaser type things if you're going to run him at power forward but he's a really really nice card great release katie's still one of the better cards in my my team and definitely comes in at a good spot at the back up um power forward position and then back up center i am going to go joel Embiid. i think a lot of people would go with some other options here 
may that be Chris Bosch or Will Chamberlain or Shaquille O'Neal or any of those types of guys. For me, Embiid is just the guy. I love the ability to stretch the floor. I understand he's 15 to 17 speed slower than um, Wilt and Shaq, but he can shoot the ball and they can't. And that's super duper valuable because defensively, he is still an elite level defender. Offensively, he's still elite in interior offensive car. He's basically as good as those guys at number at both rim protection and dunking the ball. They may rebound slightly better than him, although he's still a pretty good rebound, very good rebounder as well. Uh, and then the speed advantage is nice they may get slightly better animations at times in certain areas but i don't think it really makes up for the fact that he can stretch the floor and they don't uh it gives you a lot more space offensively and right now spacing is super duper important especially now that three hunting has become much harder with all the gameplay changes that have been made so Embiid is an awesome card and i think he's definitely my favorite choice for the backup center position currently in my team so right now this is i think the best team that i would be running uh in my team if i had the choice to use every single card that's currently available in the game build the best team possible i think it would would look like this obviously this team will continue to change but right now this is an incredible squad would not recommend spending the amount of money or time that it requires to build this team though even i do not have all of these cards uh, although i do have most of them um and obviously it's my job so i play the game a lot which is allows me to grind out a lot more mt than a lot of average people are able to build and that's okay so with that being said i hope you did enjoy the video if you did make sure you hit that like button leave a comment and subscribe i'll be back with more 2k content very very soon and i appreciate y'all peace